there and Good morning and welcome to Generations Church, guys. We're glad you could join us here today. It is Father's Day. I'm Elise. And I'm Ellie. Yep, and we're glad you guys could come here, whether you're online or in person. We're just super excited to have you guys in here. Super excited to have all the dads in here that we're celebrating. It's really awesome. So, real quick, right off the bat, a few announcements. Um, Friday, July 9th is our Griffin Christian Women's Center. That's our next visit to that. It's, again, always a great time. We get to go visit with those ladies fellowship, eat some food, play some games. They really enjoy to talk about their lives and everything. And we just love on those ladies because, yeah. you know, they just want some companionship and yeah. just some friendship. So that's what we do down there. Yeah. And they yeah. love on us back equally. It's yeah. amazing. They're just, it's really great. It's a great outreach opportunity. If you have any questions about that or anything, you can always talk to Stacey Morris. She'll be there inside if you're in person or she will be in some way where you can contact her and her information will be shared sometime throughout the service. Yes. So let us know. Um, worship night. That was this past Thursday. I didn't get to go to it. I don't know if you did. No, but sadly, no. But well, I heard it was an amazing an time. An amazing experience. And they truly are. I hope you guys got to go. If you did, let us know in the comments how it was. Talk to somebody in the building. Express your want for it more. Because I know we're trying to do those um, at, least, at least a few times a year. Yeah. Yeah. But they are phenomenal. They're amazing experiences. We really just get to come together, worship Jesus. You feel the Holy Spirit in the room. So it's we just have We just have a great time when we're there. We just yes. have a great time just worship and because sometimes we don't always get a chance to do that just to worship and it's just a yeah. humbling and just a great yes. experience and what's nice about it is it's not like some church you know formal church function it's just a night to come and worship we've had people from other churches come other you know family friends and everything it's nothing formal you just want to come and sing about jesus come and sing about jesus with us yep. you can just come and soak it all up it doesn't have to be anything special so uh our church picnic last sunday we had the oh, cornhole yeah. tournament the Weed Whackers, me and Miss Rebecca, we won, <laughs> as I predicted. And I heard all about that yes, in the group sure chat did. later that yes. day. <laughs> we won. It was amazing. We uh, defeated our um, equally competent uh, rivals. Yeah, rivals. Rivals. Yes. Um, Emily and Kiara. Kiara. Now, yeah. they, they tried their best. They really did. But, no, it wasn't a big deal. It, was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it wasn't a big deal unless it wasn't a big you... Deal. We're there. Yes, unless you experienced it like I did. I got super sunburned for it, but it was it was worth it. So uh, we got some fun stuff. So of course it's Father's Day. How will you guys be celebrating your dads today? Let us know. Uh, I know that my family's going out to Dave and Buster's later. We're gonna have a fun Ooh. time. Feed all those crowds. Probably not. We're gonna get there right around dinner time, so it's gonna be fun. But. I think it'll be enjoyable. We've got some family in town, so I'm super excited about that. Yeah, we're. Uh, my mom made my dad his favorite meal, so nice. we're going to have that later tonight when I get home from work. So it's just going to be you know, a great time just celebrating my dad. Nice. Yes. So let us know what you're doing for your dad or the important men of your life. Just let us know. Yes, yes. Um, summer begins today. Today is actually supposed to be the longest day of the year, which feels kind of dreary and icky right now. But I guess this dreary and ickiness is going to last extra long today, so that's good. <laughs> It's also National uh, Seashell Day, which I think is very fitting for summer. I actually got to go to the beach this past week, um, and that was cool. I got some really cool seashells. Oh, yeah, and I fun. love. I always love to find sand dollars. I didn't find any this time, but um, it's actually got an interesting story. So I look it up. It's got to do with uh, Christ and His crucifixion and uh, poinsettia, that Christmas flower, if you know what it is. But I definitely look up that. The story of the sand dollars. It's, it's interesting. 
So, uh, let's see. The 16th was National Fudge Day. Does anybody have a favorite kind of fudge? Do you have a favorite kind of fudge? Whatever my grandma wants to make that day is my uh -huh. favorite kind of fudge yep. because it is all good whenever yep. she makes it. Fudge is good, but it's sweet. It is rich. It is really sweet. Yeah. Uh, the 17th <laughs> was National Eat Your Veggies Day. Yeah, which is contrasting to the fudge. So, you know, we just love to have the polar opposite. you got to have balance mm -hmm. in your life. Yep, so, you yep. know, one day's fudge, the next day's veggies. You know, yep. you got to do what you got to do. Yep, yep. That's how it works. <laughs> yep. That's how it is sometimes. That's how life yep. works. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, anything else going on in your life this week? I see we got our hair done, ma'am. Yeah, we're looking beautiful. We're looking Look at her, people. She's gorgeous. <laughs> and then on Saturday, I'm actually taking my pilot's test. Fantastic. Y'all yeah. be praying for her. Yes, she all is... the prayers, please. Yes. <laughs> it's a very stressful test. I've been working almost two years to get where I am for uh -huh. it. So Working hard. Really appreciate all those prayers and stuff yes. for it because yes. it's very... I wouldn't say stressful, but it's very time-consuming. Oh, yeah. so. And nerve-wracking, too. But this yes. is, y'all, this is what she wants to do. This is the purpose God has called her to. Oh, this yes. is amazing. So prayers for that, prayers for safety, for your flight, <laughs> everything to go well. Yes. You know, A's all across the board. So yes. prayers for that, y'all. Yes. Um, yeah, so any prayer requests or praise reports, y'all, let us know in the comments. Yeah, it'll either be above or below you, whatever, mm -hmm. however you see us, whatever platform you're on. Don't hesitate yep. to let us know. And if you don't want us to know all the details, just put it unspoken in there. We have mm -hmm. people that pray for you every single day of the week. Yep. And we just love to know, we just want to let y'all know that we will always be praying for you. Yes, yes. So, anything else this week? How about you? Me, I have got work in school, but that's okay. That's okay. That's how it goes. Um, you know, I... It's, I'm, I'm privileged to be able to have that opportunity because I'm saving up money and I'm working towards my purpose too. So I'm yes. super excited. I will be done with school soon. So I'm, I'm grateful Yay. for all the people who have supported me through that. Yes. Um, it's, it's been a long and hard journey, but it is almost finally over. So <laughs> <laughs> Then the real work begins. Yes, exactly. Then the real work begins. <laughs> so we love you guys. We have a great sermon for y'all today. Celebrate your dads. Let us know what's going on.
Good morning, Generations. Let's try that one more time. Good morning, Generations. All right, thank you for joining us this morning. If you'll just stand up and worship with us. If you're online, stand up in your home, kneel, squat, whatever you want to do, let's stand up and worship him this morning. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your life. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won, you've already won. Already, you've already. 
Proverbs 20, verse uh, 7. The just man walketh in his integrity, and his children are blessed after him. And, you know, this next song, it talks about, uh, you know, being blessed generation after generation after generation. And if we look back at our fathers and our father's father, they had all this, did all this hard work and, you know, sowed the seed that we're now reaping. And I think blessings are no different. We're blessed and we need to, the just man walketh in his integrity. If we keep our integrity, we'll be blessed. Our children will be blessed. All we have to do is just trust in him and trust the process of what, what we're going through. Whatever trial, whatever struggle we're going through, we got to trust the process. And I've had to look at that in the face recently. And have to trust the process that wherever I'm at right now, I'm being prepared for something else. And I think this whole church is being prepared for something else. We seen just a glimpse of that on Thursday night with the worship night. It was great, but he's preparing us for something greater. And I, I felt it Thursday. He was here. I felt that whatever, whatever we're doing now, he's stirring up something in our church that's going to be greater. I don't know when. I don't know what that's going to look like. But I know that each and every one of us is not where we were. But we're definitely not where we're going to be either. We're headed in that direction. He's leading our path and all we have to do is follow where he's leading us to. But we have to listen. We have to listen to his direction. We can't just think we can do it on our own because we can't. We'll just trust him and lean on him in those hard times. And trust the process that no matter what, what we're going through right then that seems so hard, he's going to lead our steps that way. Whatever way he wants us to be, but we have to listen and follow. So I pray this morning for each and every one of you in here and whoever's joining us online. I pray for you. I pray that you will listen. You will just stop in the busy world that we live in and just stop and listen. And say, God, I don't know my next step, but you do. Please lead me. I'm going to take it wherever it leads me. I'm going to take it. I'm going to trust what you're telling me, and I'm going to take it. So I pray this morning that as we go into this next song, it's, it's from Scripture. It's from Scripture. The words of this song are from Scripture. So just listen to them and sing out this morning. Shine upon you and 
be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And today a little girl sat just about three rows back <laughs> and after mama Lori over here sang a song this morning King of Kings 
she just smiled. And I said, look at Jesus. She's filled with Jesus this morning. She smiled that lit up the room as her mama just sang that song. And when she was done, she gave her thumbs up. And it was as if Jesus was saying, thumbs up. Thank you for praising and worshiping me this morning. So I just want to tell you about that moment of worship this morning that we all don't get to see. And it was a pleasure to see it this morning and just a child in awe of Jesus this morning. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for a time to worship. Lord, we thank you for the fathers today in the room. Me being one, it's not, it's not an easy job, Father. But we have to lean and trust on you. And there are times in our lives where we trusted on ourselves and it didn't work out. But that's the beauty of you. It's through the mistakes. We will eventually find you. And Lord, I thank you for that this morning that you were there the whole time. You never left me or forsaken me. You were by my side. And when I found you, I understood. So, Lord, I thank you for that this morning. Lord, I thank you for Chris. Pastor Chris, as he comes with a message this morning straight from you, empty himself of himself, Lord, and fill him with your Holy Spirit this morning so that he can relay the words that you gave him today to speak to us. Let our hearts and minds be open to receive it this morning. And at the end, you'll get all the praise, the glory, and the honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. All right, thank you guys so much for worshiping with us. You can go ahead and be seated. Go ahead and take your seat. Um, good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? It's good to see you guys. Um, happy Father's Day again one more time to all the fathers in the room. Mario already mentioned it. Yeah, go ahead and give, give your hand a clap. I already mentioned it, that is not an easy job, so we just want to take a minute and say thank you and that we appreciate you, we're proud of you, we celebrate you this morning. Um, so hey, if this is your first time at Generations Church, we just want to welcome you, we want to say thank you for coming and spending time with us. We know you have many choices of how to spend your Sunday morning and we're glad that you decided to come here. So if that is you, a couple of things. First thing, on the back of the seat in front of you, there's a white QR code. If you scan that with your phone, that'll take you right to our Connect card. We'd just love to know that you were here. If you want to just take a second, fill out your information, tell us your name, all that good stuff. We would love to have a record of your visit. And then at the end of service, not now, but when we finish, if you'll go out through these back doors, we have a gift we want to give you. So if you'll just stop by on your way out, we'd love to meet you, say hey, and just take a second and get to know you if that's cool. All right? Sound good? All right. So uh, we just finished up a pretty busy week. All right, we just finished our church picnic, which was awesome. We had a wonderful cornhole tournament. The competition was fierce. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Thank you, everybody, who came out and brought food and stuff like that. It was a great time, and we appreciate all of your help. And then last Thursday, we just had our worship night. And if you missed that, I just want to say, number one, we hope you come to the next one. And number two, I'm sorry you missed it because it was a great night. We had a lot, a lot of good stuff happen there. And so... Um, thank you again, everybody, who put in time for making our worship night um, a success. And so we thank you for that. And so we're going to jump into our time of giving really quickly. And so, again, if you are in the room, there are two ways you can give. You can either scan the green QR code on the back of the seat in front of you, or you can give um, at the bucket in the back room. If you are online, you can go to generationswithaz.church. You can give there. Or you can go, or you can text generations also with a Z to seven seven nine seven seven, and you can give in either one of those ways. So if you want to take a minute, prepare your giving. I'm going to pray, and then uh, Pastor Chris will come up. All right, Father God, we just thank you for this morning. God, we thank you for the time of worship that we've had um, thus far, and as we continue to uh, move forward in our time of worship with our giving, Lord, we just want to stop and take a moment and say thank you, God. Thank you for providing for us, Lord. Thank you for um, giving to us first, God. And so right now we come with a cheerful heart. And if there's anybody in the room that would say that giving is a little bit tougher for them right now, Lord, I just, I just pray a special blessing over them, God. I pray that you would remind them that um, the significant part is not how much they're giving, God. It's their obedience. Um, it's their doing what you've asked them to do, God. And so right now we just celebrate those who are giving, God. We ask that you would take our gift, that you would multiply it, and they would use it to advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. How you guys doing? 
That didn't sound too good. How you guys doing? Yeah, it's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Let me just say, before I go any further, the cornhole tournament. It was great. It was great. It was really good. I, I just had a problem. I should have protested on last Sunday, but I didn't. We got to the championship game. Me, who was my partner, Adam was my partner. We were playing against Mike Johnson and his stepdad was going to be the uh, final game for the championship, and his stepdad had to leave. And so Mike picked up a partner who had been playing around at the park. He wasn't even involved in the tournament. Apparently, this guy was a professional cornhole shooter. <laughs> and had it not been for that, Adam and I had a, would have taken the championship. There's an asterisk, yeah, 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 yeah. Like Georgia Tech in 19, what? <laughs> 19, what, what year was that, 1991? 1990. January 2nd, 1990. I remember watching that game, by the way. Who they played, Colorado, Nebraska. I was all the way in uh, Birmingham, Alabama at the time. So, anyway, welcome to you guys for, who are here. Happy Father's Day. How many fathers we got in the room? All right. Good to see fathers in the house of God on uh, Father's Day. It's a good place for fathers to be. Um, I grew up, I always say this about myself. I, I usually say when I'm giving a testimony, I say I'm an only child with three siblings. And I say that because I kind of grew up like an only child. I have a brother and a sister. Uh, on my, my parents divorced when I was two. And so I have a brother and sister with my dad and my stepmother. And um, my brother, my little brother, He's uh, seven years younger than me, six foot four, does MMA. And then my sister, Lori, who's up here, she's nine years younger than me. So I didn't really grow up in the same household. And then on my other side of the family, my mom, my sister, Crystal, she's 17 years younger than me. And so I always say I'm a, kind of a only child with three siblings. But I grew up, and I just want to say to my dad, my dad's here today. You know, sometimes you don't feel like, you know, the way I, the way I grew up in uh two pair at home that you got to spend enough time with me probably growing up but as an adult and as a young man as a teenager you've just, I've learned so much from you you know you've taught me how to love in seasons when um, I was probably not lovable I watched you do that to me and you've taught me that I've watched you step in and, and you've taught me how to be a dad you may not realize how much influence you've had in my life but I just want to say that to you today and so Happy Father's Day. Zach, won't be long. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. And so we're in this series that's called A Summer of Promise. And, and, and throughout the summer, you know, we planted a church over a year ago, just in time for COVID, five weeks before COVID, and, and we came into that season. And on the other side, I feel like God's given us a glimpse of where he's taking us, where he's leading us over this summer. We're catching glimpses. Thursday night at the worship night, we had like almost the whole platform except for Mario and myself. And Joan was 30 years old and younger. And Joan's not far away. Afterwards, I had to go apologize to her. I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry I didn't point you out. You're over 30. But God's given us glimpses of what he's calling us to. This has been a journey. You know, have you ever felt like God was calling you or leading you somewhere and it just seems like it wasn't never going to happen in your life? But we're getting glimpses this summer. He began talking to us the first week of the series. He said to remember who we are. Ephesians 2 10 says, For we are God's masterpiece created anew in Christ Jesus to do what? Oh, I'm going to have to send you home with some homework. To do the good things that he created for us long ago. And then the week after that, Chris Burns got up. Young Chris, 26 years old, got up. He talked to us about falling forward. You know, one of the things we say as, as a church is we're not afraid to fail because we understand that's the best way to learn. And, and anybody got a, the Bible app on your phone? Anybody have that? Do you know that was actually born out of a failure? Life Church had done this YouTube thing that they were going to do the Bible on, and, and it failed, and they were about to shut it down, and it was about the time that Apple came out with their apps. And they were actually one of the first 100 apps, and now the U, the version Bible app is on almost a half a billion phones across the world out of a mistake that God used to push forward. And then the week after that, I talked to you about how um, Jesus is calling us to look through 
the lens of his compassion to the world around us and love people right where they are. And then last week we had a young man. Anybody remember the young man from last week? 20 years old, Jonathan. Uh, I said this uh, on Thursday night. For you guys who weren't here, would you believe it if I told you that was his first sermon ever? And it was. And the young 20-year-old, he talked to us about graves of craving, about how, some, how sometimes the things that we crave in our lives will lead to the, the spiritual destruction in our lives when we're not focused on the person of Jesus. And he went back to the Old Testament and he preached a great sermon. This morning, I want to go, I don't normally preach out of the Old Testament, but that's where we're going this morning. We're going to Joshua chapter 6. Anybody say Joshua? Joshua chapter 6. I want to set a little bit of a kind of get you to where we are you know Israel was they were in bondage in Egypt and then God came and he delivered them out of Egypt you remember they were they were there and he did all these these miracles in front of the uh, these signs in front of the Pharaoh and then eventually they went out and they went out through the Dead Sea God departed the waters and they walked through on dry land into the Dead Sea and then Israel got out in and they were headed towards the promised land. You remember God told them they were going to go to a land flowing with milk and honey, a great land. And so they got out. When they came out of Egypt, they were about 13 days' journey from the promised land. And during that time, uh, Moses sent some spies in to spy out the land. There was 12, one from each tribe, and they went in to spy out the land. And, and, and a few of them went in and said, man, we're going to take this land. Two of them said, it's great, it's good, there's lands full with milk and honey. But 10 of them, said, man, there's giants in there. And because of the voices of ten, the voices of the many, a whole generation didn't enter in because they lived in fear, not in faith, and didn't go take what God had given them, had called them. And so a whole generation died off. And it was about 45 years later, Joshua comes on well he wasn't on didn't come on the scene he was actually one of the 12 who went in but he becomes the leader of Egypt and and God says it's time you're going to go into this land everywhere you go everywhere you tread your foot I have given this land to you but you need to be strong and it's a dialogue strong and there we go thank you thank you thank you you can talk back to me that's okay and uh so they did that in the second chapter of um Joshua Rahab, anybody know Rahab? Joshua sent some spies in. And the spies went to spy out the land and see what was going on. Apparently, uh, the people there were afraid of the Israelites. They didn't know that, but they were. And so they went into Rahab's house. She, she gave them all the, all the goods. And then um, in chapter 3, Israel crosses the Jordan. Have you ever heard this story? where they cross over the Jordan River. They come up to the Jordan River. If you were ever going to cross the Jordan River, this was the worst time ever to cross it. The flood blanks were as high as they could possibly be. And what did God tell Joshua to do? He said, get them in the water. And so the, the priests that, that, that carried the Ark of the Covenant, they got into the water, and as they stepped in, the flow of the river stopped, and Israel walked through on dry ground once again. And when they got on the other side, they were commanded to go and, and make, take 12, one person from each tribe and build a memorial. Take a stone, build a memorial to remember what God had done. How many of you guys know when, whenever you're in a situation and you're struggling with your, what God's calling you to, if you can always look back at what he's already done to help you find faith to move forward. We get into chapter 5, and in chapter 5, see, all the people who came out of Egypt, all the Israelites that came out of Egypt were circumcised on the eighth day while they were in Egypt. But one, the ones who were born outside of Egypt, a whole generation of them, they were uncircumcised. And so as men, they were commanded to go get circumcised. And that wouldn't be a good day, I don't know about you, as a grown man having to go do a, through all that. And then in chapter 5, Joshua encounters this this person, it was actually a, this is a, it's actually Jesus. It's an epiphany, not an epiphany, but it was an Old Testament time where Jesus comes on the scene before he was incarnated. And it says, And it came to pass when Joshua was, was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite with him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went 
to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No. But as commander of the army and of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, worshipped, and said to him, What does my Lord his servant say? Then the commander of the Lord's army said, Take off your sandals, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. And this morning, I want to go, that was the last of chapter 5. I want to look at chapter 6, look at the first 10 verses this morning. And uh, talk to you for a little bit from there. Um, so verse 1, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites, and no one went in and no one came out. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast of trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army, Advance, march around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets, and the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed them. The armed guard marched around the head of the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard followed the Ark. But Joshua had commanded the army, Do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you. Then shout. I want to talk a few moments this morning from this subject don't quit your head Lord Jesus I just thank you that you go before us to the places you've called us I thank you that despite our shortcomings and our failures you love us anyway and anything that you've ever started or began in us, you will be the one who finishes it in us if we just continue to lean into you, press into you, and allow your spirit to do its work in our lives. Holy Spirit, come. Ignite something in us that cannot be put out. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Anybody ever feel like you got a promise from the Lord? That wasn't coming to fruition. Yeah. 18 years ago today, we talked a little bit about this Thursday night. My mother went home to be with Jesus after a battle with lung cancer. She was stage four when she found it, found it in March, lived till June of that year. My baby sister, Crystal, she was, I was 17 when she was born. She was 11 when her mom went to be with Jesus. Three days ago, I was the same age she was when she passed away. So the last three days in my life are three days that she never had. She was 46 years old. Life goes quick. Life's short, it's but a vapor. You know, for me, looking back from right now, and when I think of that, I'm like, man, that wasn't very long. She didn't have long. Some of you guys are older, more seasoned than I am, and you're probably going, hey, I haven't been here that long. Life is really short. And we need to understand that. You young people. Keep pressing forward in what God's called you to do because life is short. There's not time to waste. And in that same breath as what John said this morning, life is long. It's a long time to keep your integrity intact. It's a long time to to walk faithful in what God is calling you to do. But in that season of my life, I was I was at a low point, actually. See, I had gotten married young. Live like a fool. At the same time in my life, I was going through divorce. 
Everything that I had was gone. But God was telling me to trust him, to lean into him, to trust him, that I would still be a leader of my family. And so I just dug in. I just leaned in to what he was doing. There was a battle. And this was battle was like two years in my life where I had to walk through trials. Anybody been through a long trial like that? Anybody been through a divorce? You know the pain of it, what it takes to walk through it. It was two years before it was ever done. I remained vigilant towards the Lord through the whole season. And then he began showing me things on the other side of that. He began showing me my heart for the next generation through the soccer league. And he began stirring things inside of me for this next generation. In 2009, he told me that I was going to plan a church one day. I was a frustrated worship leader at the time. And over the past 13 years, through situations and seasons, God has developed me. And now we get to where we are today. Launched the church just in time for COVID. Five weeks. That's grace, by the way, number five. Five weeks before COVID hit the world. And it feels like, I don't know about you guys, but for a long time it felt like we were just marching around, didn't it? You just marching around these walls. Sometimes it still feels like we're marching around these walls. But a lot of times when you get like that, you want to quit, right? When it gets hard, you want to shrink back, you want to quit, don't quit. I just want to say, don't quit. You're ahead. Oftentimes in those seasons, our perspective gets blocked when we get to where we feel like we want to quit. See, it's like Joshua. They're going into Jericho. They're going to take this city. And there were these walls. And the thing about Jericho wasn't the biggest city in the world. Like you could walk around it in like an hour. But it had these huge walls. So when they looked at it, they saw these walls. And you and I in our situations that we find ourselves in day in and day out, we see walls. We see walls of, of, of culture. We see walls of division. We see walls of maybe your spouse. I don't know. We see walls, your kids, teenagers. Man, Jesus got something good on your life, you teenagers, but there's this wall. And parents, you understand. And it feels like our perspective gets blocked sometimes when we just look at these walls. God told Joshua this. He said, now the gates of Jericho were securely barred. And no one came in and no one came out. And then the Lord said to Joshua, see, I've given you. I've delivered Jericho over to you. You're like, what? I'm looking at this thing. The walls are barred. They're securely barred. And God says, see, he talks in past tense to Joshua. I've already given you this land. And so sometimes from our human perspective, we just look at walls. And we don't listen to the voice and the promises of God that he's called us to. And another thing that happens is our progress isn't always obvious. You ever notice that in your life? Like it feels like you're just walking around in circles. God told them to go out and and walk around the wall. He told Joshua that. He said, go out, take your men. You're going to walk around the city for six days. And then on the seventh day, you're going to walk around seven times. And on each day, they would get out there and just walk around the wall. They probably got there. They thought something exciting was going to happen. Could you imagine guys coming home to your wife after that day? And so you're like, hey. How'd it go today? Well, we just walked around for a little bit. It's kind of like spring training, you know. Just did some walking. Did some walking. And you can't see your progress sometimes. Have you noticed? Back in, it was about a month and a half ago, we were in a series called Show the World. Do you remember, Mario? And I had a potential COVID exposure. And so 
I didn't do church that day. I stayed away. Well, I was outside in the parking lot. Everybody else was in here. But we went back and we grabbed a video from October and we were able to watch the video. And, and it doesn't seem sometimes like we're making progress. But when you stop and you look back at how far you come, you can see the progress. Everything we had done in six months was different. We had grown a lot. And we can't quit. We got to keep going. Even though we don't understand the progress, we don't see the progress, we got to keep going because we're ahead. I don't know if you noticed this in the text. Joshua didn't tell the people what God had actually told him. Joshua told, or God told Joshua that he was going to walk around for six days. And then on the seventh day, they were going to walk around seven times and, and the walls were going to fall. All Joshua told the people is we're going to walk around the, the wall. So can you imagine? This is an army. They're going out. We're going to take this city. All right, guys, here's the plan. Let's go walk around the wall today. How many of you guys would follow me into a battle like that? We take the marching band from Woodland High School. They'll go out front with the trumpets and all. And so our perspective sometimes gets blocked, and sometimes our progress isn't always obvious, but we can't quit. And sometimes the process that God puts us in is open-ended. Because he didn't tell them what was going to happen. They got out there each day, and they're walking. They don't know what's coming next. They're walking around the wall. They show up, and they just kept being faithful to what they were asked to do. And the season, continuing to walk around the wall, walk around the wall, day in, day out. I don't know about you, but it's easier for me to, if I got a finish line, to do something. Now, how many of you guys like to work out, Chris? Yeah, yeah. If I said you had to do 50 reps, you could do that. Lightweight, 50 reps. But if I just told you to keep lifting, you wouldn't be encouraged very much. And you might not get to 50, but if you, if you knew you had to get to 50, you could push through to 50. Matter of fact, you might be single out there waiting for, for, for that special someone to come up. And if you knew he was going to arrive in two years, you'd be like, all right, Jesus, I can be faithful, I can remain faithful. Matter of fact, I go three if I just know it's three. But God's timelines, doesn't all, he doesn't always show us the answer. And he's called you and I to live by faith. And I really believe God's going to do something right here in the midst of our church, in the midst of this city. He's going to use us for great things, but he's not giving us a timeline. All he's saying is just, just keep walking. Reminds me of finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. Just keep walking, just keep walking, just keep walking. Matter of fact, that might be why, um, here's what Joshua said. He says, do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say a word until the day I tell you. In other words, shut up and walk. You guys can come back. One of the reasons why he may have told them that is because of those spies who went into the land way back 40 years earlier and because of their mouths a generation was kept out see some things in our lives we don't ever see breakthrough because we can't stop complaining about the lack of progress we can't stop complaining about how far we haven't got i'm preaching to the preacher this morning just so you know But God just wants us to walk. God just wants us to keep walking. He wants us to show up and walk. He wants us to shut up and walk. That thing in your life that you're struggling with right now. Just be still. Be quiet. And walk with Jesus through it. And I promise you, 
you'll see something on the other side. I feel like he's asking me to challenge us as a church with something. You know, we can't control everything around us. We can't control the timeline, but we can show up. We can show up in His presence. We can show up, not necessarily to church, but we can show up in His presence daily, individually. And that's the first half of what I feel like He's asking us to do. Show up and bring somebody with you. Show up and bring somebody to church with you. But show up, not only that, show up and bring somebody to Jesus with you. Keep your eyes open. God's going to be doing something in our midst, and it's not going to happen on a platform. It's not really going to happen on a Sunday morning. It's really going to happen when you and I and each one of us get fully in to what Jesus is asking each one of us to do individually. In our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, in all the environments that we find ourselves in. Keep your eyes open. We want to be a church that lives with our eyes wide open, searching out opportunities to love people like Jesus would. Don't quit. We're ahead. That thing you're going through, you may not seem like you've made it very far. Don't quit. You're ahead. You're a lot closer to the breakthrough than you realize. A lot of people quit the day before the breakthrough. Just think if they had to stop walking on the sixth day and didn't march around that wall seven times on the seventh day. Don't quit. You're ahead. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for your presence. I thank you for your promises in our lives, Lord Jesus. I thank you that, that you go with us everywhere you go. Everywhere we go, you're there with us. Everywhere we place our foot, you're given us. Help us to trust you. Help us not to walk through this life looking at what we could get from you, but help us look around and see the opportunities and the obstacles and the things that we may see as walls Help us see the opportunities in those situations. Lord, we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. chains to come knowing the battles won for you have never failed me yet. your promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness your hands this is my confidence you never fail me yeah. I know the night won't last your word will come 
darkness still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. Your promise still stands. Chris's message this morning, dear Lord, that we need to just keep walking, keep moving forward, dear Lord, and let's trust this process. Thank you for each and every one that joined us either here or online, dear Lord. Just bless them, and I thank them for, for, for joining you this morning, dear Lord, in our praise. Thank you for everything you do for us, and be with us this, this week, dear Lord, that we would be a blessing to someone else. Thank you for everything you do for us, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank y'all. See you guys next Sunday.